Welcome everyone to The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. Alright, so this game here, I first talked about it on my channel back when I did the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D Let's Play, where I basically asked all of you, you know, what games you would want to see me LP in the future. What Zelda games specifically? There were a few that were mentioned, but the one that had the most was Majora's Mask, which makes sense because this is, in fact, the direct sequel to Ocarina of Time. So, let me just press start while I talk. Oh my god. Uh, so this game here, it's, um, it's a very, very weird Zelda game. I'll just start by saying that. If you have never played this game, or even if you played it a little bit and didn't get far into it, uh, you might not really know too much about this, but it's a very weird dynamic. Now here's the thing, the game looks and plays very similarly to Ocarina of Time. So if you grew up with Ocarina of Time and you played it and all, and you're like, oh I got this, you know, well, maybe not. Maybe not, because uh, it's very, very different, like I said. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna put, I always just go ahead and put shiny, a lot of people just call me that, so let's do that. Yeah, it's a very, very different uh, and weird game, uh, mainly because uh, this game, every time you're playing it, it's like you feel rushed, you feel anxious, because there's a time limit the entire game. You need to do certain things as fast as possible. Anyway, in the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend. I didn't finish saying that. Fucking God. A boy who, after battling evil and saving Hyrule, crept away from the land that made him. Done with the battles he once waged across time, he embarked on a journey, a secret and personal journey. Dude, this text is so damn fast. Seriously. I'm not pressing that, it's moving by itself. I, I can barely read that when I start talking when it first... Oh my god. Anyway, um, it's basically talking about, you know, the, um, the transition between Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and basically what's going on now, so yeah. It just gave like a quick introduction or transition from Ocarina of Time. So there's a uh, there's Link right there as you can see, and there's a cute little horse. That's actually uh, Epona, and two fairies. Yeah, but it's been a while. It really has been a while since I LP'd a Zelda game. I believe the last Zelda game that I did was Ocarina of Time, and I finished it at around January, I think, which has been like, oh my god, a good what eight months. It's been like eight months since I finished that LP. 
so I haven't LP'd a Zelda game since. Now the good news is that um, it seems like Twilight Princess is going to actually come to the Switch. It hasn't been officially confirmed, I don't think, uh, but there's a lot of speculation. So if it does come onto the Switch, I'm going to absolutely enjoy that. I will love it. I really will. That game holds a very special place in my heart. It's fantastic. Alright, so here's this guy here uh, wearing this creepy-ass mask. Alright, so the fairies essentially scared Link or something. They did something weird. And now he's just there. <laughs> passed out on the ground. And this guy wearing that creepy mask is just kind of like... He just took the, the ocarina. What a pretty ocarina. Yeah. It actually is damn pretty. Okay. But yeah, all of this, as you can see, is just like the premise of... What's going to be happening, you know, in this uh, in this game? Basically how it starts. So Link woke up. <laughs> oh gosh. That would hurt like hell, honestly, if they were doing that. Look at that, he's not even wearing any pants. He's being dragged onto the- Ooh, God, that is painful. That is so painful. I can feel it. Holy crap. Alright, so we're about to get taken into the gameplay for the first time now. So like I was saying before, uh, this game plays extremely similar to Ocarina of Time. So if you play the game or watch me play the game back in December and January, then you are pretty familiar with how Ocarina of Time works and how this game should work. So. There's two screens for all of you, one in the top left corner and one in the bottom right corner. The bottom right corner shows the status, as you can see. A lot of the stuff are blank right now, including zero rupees, only three hearts, no map, and all the things on the right side and the bottom left are blank, as you can see. If I tap masks, it's blank. If I tap map, no map. If I tap items, blank. As you can see, nothing. Just like any new game, you know? You start with pretty much nothing. So you move with the stick, it's the 3DS, um, the pad will not make Link move, just to clarify. Um, you can actually hold this uh, perspective like that by pressing the L button. If you are holding the L button and then move back or forward, you can then do a jump, a uh, roll forward or a backflip. You can also jump to the side like Ocarina of Time. Uh, pressing R will go ahead and make you shield, but if you're holding L while then shielding, you can shield and move around at the same time, as opposed to just shielding, you can't move, you can basically aim your defense. Um, a while moving forward will make you roll. Uh, if it's when you're not uh, moving forward, then you will just simply examine or talk with things or people. Uh, the X button and the Y button are basically quick buttons for things that we get, different equipment. The B button will go ahead and sheath your sword. Um, or unsheath, sorry. Um, and then just press B again to attack. And yeah, you can basically attack um, many different ways, of course. I believe you start with a small spin. You don't have the great spin, but you can do this. And release, and there we go. It's a very slow motion-like spin. Kind of weird, actually, how incredibly slow that is, but... We got some money there. Not bad, not bad. Ooh, that's a 5 right there. Perfect. Like that. Love it. Getting a lot of money there, so that's pretty good. Another 5. I'm already up to 18. Wow. Okay, so let's go ahead and go. That's about all the controls for now. There really isn't uh, much else to it for now, so... Yeah, alright, so let's let's do this. Now, if you jump off any ledge automatically, um, Link will actually jump. One really interesting thing that they did here is that in Majora's Mask, Link's jumps are a little more creative, as you kind of just saw right there. I didn't make him do like a backflip from one ledge to another. He did it by himself. It's just a nice little style that they added, so points for that, definitely, because Ocarina of Time was all just basic jumps. They wanted to get a little more creative with this, you know? So now we're in this weird shaman shit, is what it seems. What the hell is this? I don't know. We landed specifically on the only flower in the entire pond in here. Convenient. That's actually a very creepy perspective right there. Did you see that? It looks so creepy. Stupid horse? What? See, the first time I actually saw that, when he says I got rid of it, I actually thought that he meant that, like, he killed the horse. And I was like, I was so sad. 
But no, that terminology is very open-ended and vague. I, I think they wanted to do that on purpose, you know? So, that's why they did that, or, or I guess made the words like that. But no, no, he doesn't actually, or she doesn't die. They didn't kill Epona, okay? It's a Nintendo game, rated E. Alright, that should actually tell you a few things. The first time I actually played this game, in my mind I remember, I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? I'm in this weird, like, like, oh my god, like, did Link, like, do mushrooms or something? Or, like, is he on drugs? What the hell is this? It's just so weird. But as you can see, he actually wasn't on drugs. In fact, it was the Skull Kid that used some kind of drug thing on him, is what it seems. Well, it was more so magic. It was magic. And he just transformed Link into a scrub. A Deku scrub. And now... Oh god. This is actually some creepy this shit though. Like it seriously is like, imagine this. Like... Oh god. Well... Um, you got locked out. That's what you get for being a bully, okay? You were basically hitting Link. Oh yeah, because it's totally Link's fault for you attacking him. I swear, some people are just so stupid, or in this case, some fairies are just so stupid. God. Is there something stuck on my face? She says. Do you even have a face? I just see a white ball. A helpless little girl. Oh my god. Alright, well. Even though I just introduced all the um, controls of um, Human Link, well, we're about to get introduced to some different controls now. Now we are actually uh, different. So, X and Y do nothing, B does nothing. You can still do this and backflip and stuff. Uh, however, the A button actually makes your spinning attack now, as you can see. And that's about all you can do. You can also shield like this. It's like you're bringing a nut or something to like to protect yourself with. So, let's approach and press A to open the door. Okay. So now she's apologizing and saying, take me with you. I guess I... Okay. Alright, so now... Apparently we're just gonna... He says, my name's Tattle. It's nice to meet you or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so it's not Navi. It's actually a new fairy. It's Tattle. Sure. Alright, so you can always press up on the pad to ask for um, Tattle's help. Like right there, as you can see. Or, sorry, right in this case. Um, so... Here we go. Basically, the way these flowers work is that you hold the A, and then you can aim wherever you want. And then you essentially can release... And you get blasted off. There we go. Simple enough, actually. Simple enough. Alright, so here's a new room now. So this one is just like the previous room. There's a number of, um, just flower... What do you call it? Like, hovering? Flower hovering, I guess? So anytime you're already floating up there, you can actually press the A button to release automatically if you want to. Here's a chest. Let's go ahead and grab it. That's what we get. We get... Deku Nuts! These should seem familiar to all of you who played Ocarina of Time, or watched it. Yeah, so alright, so I'm not gonna just skip this dialogue. It's, it's gameplay dialogue now. The way it works is you go to item, you select any item, and then you just press the button that you want. Now Deku Nuts are set to X. It's that simple. It's actually incredibly convenient. Uh, where do I go? Do I have to go around the th Seriously? No, I think you gotta go this way, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, not the other way, dude. And then here, what? That looks so high up, but... I can't go there, no. Oh, shit! Oh my god. That was so far. Alright, one more, one more. Here we go.
Yeah, what is this? The hell is this? It's strange, but the way you look right now sort of reminds me of this tree. <laughs> yeah, I feel you on that. All right, let's go. Okay, so uh, the creepiness continues, as you can see. It's just a very eerie vibe that they really give to this game, which, honestly, I really appreciate it, and it's the little things like that that, you know, obviously make or break a game in terms of the atmosphere, or at least how they want to portray it, but this game, it really hit it. It really hit it really well, if they were going for that, because I'm telling you, man, freaking 12-year-old me playing this game, uh-uh. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Ah, the iconic line. Okay. So this here, uh, this guy should actually look familiar. He owns a happy mask shop. Uh, and yes, he was actually in the shop in Ocarina of Time, believe it or not. Okay, so he's saying that there's a way to return me to my former self, but I need to get the precious item that was stolen from me. In other words, he's talking about the ocarina. Huh. And we, get, we only get uh, three days, actually, okay, before he has to leave. Alright, so this new element here is, uh, it's new for the 3DS version, so... Uh, this thing says it's a Shike Stone. When, when the world has weighed you down with worry, crawl inside and let it show you the way. If ever you find yourself lost on your grand adventure, seek the counsel of this wise old stone. Basically, it's like Ocarina of Time where they added those stones to kind of, like, help guide you a little bit more. Uh, so... Yeah. That's that. Oh, I can just go on through. Alright, so we're finally going to get introduced to the um, the place that we needed to go to. Or really, I mean, anybody should remember this place if you played Majora's Mask growing up. South Clock Town. This here is Clock Town. It's a very nice town. Basically, it's the very center of the world um, of Majora's Mask, which is Termina Bay, or Termina Field. Not, not Bay, what the heck? Termina Field. 72 hours. Alright, we gotta see the Great Fairy according to, um, Tattle. Okay. So the Great Fairy is somewhere here. Luckily, I know where she is. So the very first thing uh, you'll see is that... There's actually a number of different pathways that uh, you can go into. So, the first thing I will do, can I believe that's south? I wanna go north. Is this north? Dude, I need a freaking map. Seriously. Anyway, uh, the timer appears in the uh, bottom part of the top screen. Uh, and it's actually second by second. Definitely a lot different. than This is East Clock Town. It's actually the wrong way. It's definitely a lot different than um, the N64 version where you wouldn't actually be able to see the time. Instead, all you would be able to see was the... Uh, wait, by the way, if I go over here to this flower, I think some thing appears. Yeah. Wait, wait, hang on. Yeah, this thing. Your private property, huh? Okay. Well, oh no. Okay, that dog will actually attack you. I'm not even kidding you. It will do damage to you. So just be very careful. Alright, uh, what is this? There's an owl. An owl statue. So this is also a little bit changed from the N64 version. Save your progress up to this point, yes. Every time you approach an owl statue, you're actually able to save the game. Um, it's a little different because in the old version, you would actually have to hit him with your sword. The problem was that you didn't have access to your sword until you got through this entire chapter in the beginning first. Thus, you couldn't actually save the game until you did this whole thing first. And uh, people who weren't very good, they would never be able to save the game because they would never be able to get past the first portion of the game, you know? Which is actually kind of sad, but... Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna go in this cave here, and everything will be explained very soon. I also need to buy a map. Alright, so something happened to the Great Fairy, apparently.
Okay. So I have to find the one stray fairy. There's a stray fairy here. And I have to find her and put her back in here. Now, luckily, I know where it is. I mean, it's not that hard. Alright, so I have to go back to south. Which would be this way. So I already explored south, north, and was it east? I think I explored east. Uh, yeah, it was definitely east. Yeah. By the way, uh, using your spin attack is actually faster than just running, I believe. It's, it's a little bit faster. Not a whole lot faster, but it does speed up the process a bit. Here's the laundry pool. So, it's actually right here. All you have to do is hop to it. There it is. That's the stray fairy. Uh, just as a heads up, the Deku Scrub cannot swim, but it can bounce on water. One, two, three. Yeah, it can bounce on water that many times that you just saw. I think it's five hops. If you don't land on anything after the fifth big hop, you'll actually drown and you will take damage and go back to wherever, like right before the ledge, and you'll take damage. So don't let that happen. Don't. It's not pretty. Okay, so... I'm gonna go back up north because I have to give the Great Fairy the, uh... The Stray Fairy. Alright, so it's right here. 30, 10, 22. Oh my god. So now we got another cutscene. So these fairies should remind you of, um, you know, Ocarina of Time, because they're once again pretty much the same exact thing. She's the Great Fairy of Magic. Okay. So she's going to offer us magic power and an ability that we're able to use as a Deku Scrub. Which is like the bubble something. I forgot what it's called. I really don't know. You've been granted magic power. Yes, magic power. The man who lives in the observatory. Okay, so now she's telling us the hints for the next thing, actually. Cool. Alright, so we're all done there. Let me go ahead and go back to um, the next thing. So this bubble ability is pretty nifty, actually. Uh, the Really, the biggest thing that you want to do is... Wait, I can just talk to this guy, right? Green clothes, white fairy. Yeah, so this here is uh, Tingle, in case you don't know. It's a very creepy character, actually, that they just keep bringing back in Zelda games. I don't know why. Alright, so he's 35. I uh, think he's a fairy. And wow, okay. Wow, dude. Alright, so... Yeah, I'll buy one. So I have 18 rupees. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and buy the Clock Town map. Up the Clock Town. There we go. Alright, so now I have it as you can see. Look at everything appearing on the bottom screen. For all of you, it would be the bottom right corner of the screen. Tingle Tingle Kulo Limpa. What? The fuck? Okay. Alright. Here's how you do this. You use your bubble ability. You release. And bam. You shoot bubbles. It's that simple. Every time you hold B, you will automatically go into a first person mode. Where do you go? This guy right here. Let's talk to this guy now that we blew up that bubble, that uh, balloon. Yeah. You need a code to get in. Maybe I'll tell you what it is. Alright. What do we do? You ready? Sure. So we're about to play a little game here. If you can catch us all before sunrise, we'll teach you the secret code. Oh, and Deku Nets aren't fair game. They're bright and hurt our eyes, so you can't use them, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, he fucked up. <laughs> Alright, uh, so you just have to kind of know where these people are at. I believe, like, this first one, for example, is somewhere over here. Oh, I can, I can smash all these, huh? I could. Somewhere, oh, there he is. You just have to, like, approach him. I'm actually not sure what you have to do. What the fuck? Wait, when I like... When I ac accidentally like... God damn it! 
He made me zone out. This freaking thing is a piece of trash. Yeah, all you have to do is, like, approach him, but I don't know. I think he's just, like... Let's see. Yeah. So you just, like, run and, like, attack him or something. To be honest, I'm not really sure what it is specifically that you have to do. I, I typically just, like, run into them, and then that tends to work. Alright, so I'm gonna go in center. Actually, there's nothing in the center. I'm gonna go into, um... I'll go into West Clock Town, because there's actually something... There's one person in each location, I think. I'm pretty sure. Alright, so this here is West Clock Town. We haven't actually entered here, which is why the cutscene is appearing here. Um, so there's you. That was easy. Alright. So that's another one down. Uh, Style Clock Town has another one, kind of like right in the center of the area, I remember. Somewhere around... But you're hiding in a crate. I think it's here, actually. There we go. Only two left. The next up is the laundry pool. Let's go this way. This is so easy, isn't it? I think I look like, what the hell? Why is this so easy? Yeah, it's the beginning of the game. Makes sense. Okay. That's another one. And now we just have uh, East Clock Town. Alright. So once we do that, uh, we're going to be able to get access to the next location. Because it's kind of like what I'm doing here is like a little chain of events and stuff. I don't think it's the spot. No, it's not. It's somewhere on like the higher end, I think. Somewhere over here. And probably... Is it over here? It should be over here. No, it's not. You're here somewhere. Hmm. Oh, there he is. Okay, but how do I get there? How do I get to that area? Huh. Oh, this thing. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, it's over there. Okay, so just do that. By the way, you have until sunrise, which means that if you actually um, initiate this thing at night, you will actually have less time. It doesn't matter if you, if you accept it at like 3 a.m. or... 7 a.m. You will have until the next sunrise, so uh, the, it's better in the day. What the heck? So apparently we're not gonna be able to join, but we are gonna learn a code. Now here's the thing: the code is always random every single save file. So if you're playing the N64 version, you want to write it down: one three five four two, one three five four two. But if you, um. Are playing the 3DS version, it'll actually get saved to your. Go to gear. Wait, no. How do I. How do I go. What the fuck? Doesn't he give us a bomber's notebook? I thought we got a bomber's notebook. Hmm. Maybe not. I don't know. One, three, five, four, two. Hmm. I could have sworn that we get like a notebook, but only the 3DS version. I don't know. It's a little interesting, but anyway. Let's go ahead and uh, explore here a little bit. So, uh, this place is actually really easy. It's all just a bunch of water. Um, I think eventually I'm just. Oh, God. Oh, shit. These are Scotulas. And you're dead. That was easy. Alright, so here we're now we're in a new place. All I really have to do here is... Dude, this thing is actually not inverted, but... Okay. Shit. Night of the first day. 60 hours remain. I'm running out of time here, people. Not really, actually. This is so incredibly easy. I'm not even kidding you. I'm not. Okay, there's a scarecrow right there, but we're actually going to be going back to that later. 
We don't need to be using that right now. The only thing I really have to do here is go to the telescope, which I believe is somewhere around here. Yeah, right here. Hello, dude. A strange looking child. Yeah, I am actually. Hmm. Yes, I will gaze. Alright, so now we're going to get a chance to gaze into the telescope here. Uh, you really only want to look for one thing, and that... How do I zoom in? Zoom in is A. Go to the very top of the tower, and we're able to find the Skull Kid. How much time am I at? Ooh, I'm actually right on time there. Okay, so once that happens, we trigger the cutscene that we needed to do. Yes, I find a troublemaker. Perhaps another moon's tier, yes. Alright, let's do this. All I have to do is find the door, which is this one right here. Exit outside. But now we're right outside, in terms of feel, and there's this. You got the moon's tier. They're called gear. Gear is basically just stuff you won't normally need to mess with, okay? Yeah, so... Oh, what now? Well, yes, it's going to crush the town, actually. That's the whole premise of the whole three-day thing. But yes, if you go into gear, it'll be right there. Look at that, see? There's your gear. Alright, but now we actually have to leave this place, so I don't need to go... I just need to go all the way back. As fast as possible, really. And then I'll be done. Uh, then episode 1 will actually be complete. Fully complete and done. But, um, yeah. So I'm actually going to end it here. So if you enjoyed this episode in any way, please be sure to like. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And as always, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great and, of course, a fantastic day.